YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's Engraven here with another video um, before we get into this Mike McDonald presser and it probably went just about as expected um, just want to share a message with y'all to just be good to people be good to yourself uh, be good to your friends your family and just people in general there was somebody today that sent me a really nasty message um, talking bad about Carter he even talked bad about my wife it's crazy that he didn't say anything about me um, but he talked bad about my family, and um, I didn't even get mad. I couldn't get mad because you could tell that he was going through something, and he just needed somebody to lash out on, and I guess I was the recipient. Um, and I was just like, man, like, I, I, and I told him, too, like, I really feel bad for you because I, I know it doesn't have anything to do with me. And because I, 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 you can see through that stuff. You, you know if somebody got a real problem with you, you can tell. And, and usually if, if somebody knows you, then I can understand they have a real problem with you. But if they don't even know you, that's that's different. Um, so I just really felt bad for him. And I hope that he finds the guidance that's lacking because there, there's clearly a lack of guidance there. Um, and I'm sure he's probably even watching this video. But I, I really hope that everything, whatever he's got going on, uh, that it gets better, like quick, fast and in a hurry. Um, maybe, maybe he's stressed out because of the Ravens, the way the Ravens season ended. He's probably been watching these playoffs like, man, this should have been the Ravens. But no, nah, man, it, it, it's all good. I just, like I said, I, I feel for him, man. Because, again, if, if, if you upset with me, you upset with something, I say, uh, what, Carter ain't got nothing to do with that. My wife ain't got nothing to do with that. They ain't just like, that's, and, and I understand how people lost the internet and stuff, but, I just, I just felt for him, man. So, y'all, just a message to everybody out there. Be good to people. Because um, you never know what one of your friends or one of your family members, coworkers, whatever, may be going through. Because everybody, they got their own issues. Everybody got their own stuff that they're dealing with. Um, and you don't want to make things worse. So, try to be better. Um, anyway, to get to uh, this press conference. That featured John Harbaugh too. <laughs> I thought it was just gonna be Mike McDonald solo, but Halls was like, "Hey, hey, what's up, guy? I I have not seen Harbaugh smiling this much since I, I I don't even know, man. This dude was so happy. I have not seen Harbaugh that happy in a long time, man. This dude was grinning ear to ear the whole time. Anytime anybody made a joke, he said." <laughs> He was cracking. He, oh, anyway, let's get into the press conference. Um, he's Harb started it off. He said, hey, I'm, you may be the defensive coordinator, but I'm the head coach here. But anyway, Harb started it off. He said, Mike, he's not a stranger. And we know that he's not because he was with the Ravens since 2014. He only took that little one year vacation to Michigan. Anyway, he said, Mike is not a stranger. We consider him to be family. That's true. He is family. Uh, yeah, he said he's a great coach, better person. Um, they said he had a lot of opportunities elsewhere, uh, but that they're glad that he chose the Ravens. Um, and could that be the case? It might have been. We, we won't know. Um, but, hey, he is the Ravens' new defensive coordinator. So let's get it. Um, Harbaugh talked about, excuse me, how with Mike McDonald. He grew up around coaching, and Mike McDonald, he talked about that a little later on. Um, he actually said that he, uh, in high school, he said he played in high school, but then he got an injury. Um, and then it was at that point where he really started to think about coaching. Uh, kind of reminded me of uh, All-American. Um, is it Asher? I think, I think that's in his name, Asher. It just reminded me of his situation. But anyway, um, he, uh, he said he's an established part of Ravens culture, and I can understand that because he's been around for, for a while with the Ravens. Uh, and he's been, Hobbs also said he's a major contributor to our defense and our schemes. Uh, and he said he made a bold move last year, and he bet on himself. Ooh, speaking of betting on himself, we, we talk about that later. Uh, and he said, because it's a tough move, it's, it's tough to move from a comfortable situation. And that part is 1,000% true. Um, when you have something... Especially if you're in a situation and you know it's only going to get better from here. It's only going to go up from here. For you to move out of that situation and jump out there and take a risk, even though you are being, it is a promotion because you're going from assistant coach to coordinator, to defensive coordinator. So it is an uncomfortable move, but still a move that he felt he needed to make. And it worked out for him. It worked out for him in a major way. 
So then Mike McDonald, uh, he started and he said, it's great to see everybody again. He let that be known. And him and Harbaugh, they were joking about uh, where his uh, where his office used to be. I forgot who he said is who he says there now. But anyway, they were to- I'm telling you, all like Harbaugh was in the best mood that he's been in whew, in forever, for real, man. But anyway, he said it's nice to be back home. And he said when the opportunity came about, it was an easy decision. He thanked everybody for having confidence in him. Uh, said he wants to build off of the uh, legacy that is the Ravens' defense. And he said it's not easy to build the culture that the Ravens have built. Uh, and that's true because um, they have a winning culture overall. Um, and they, of course, it's been built on defense. Now, again, y'all know how I feel. Uh, they need a culture change. No, well, not, not a culture change, but a philosophy change. It needs to be built around the offense. Um, now, he is a defensive coordinator, so that is his focus, to make sure the other teams don't get points. So no problem with him saying this at all. That's perfectly fine. Anyway, um, the question that he was asked, how do you want this Ravens defense to be under you? And he said, building what we've been able to do over the course of the franchise. Uh, the first thing you want is a cohesive unit. Want everybody to have each other's back. And he said, you want it to be multiple. So I know there have been a lot of people talking, are we going to do 3-4? Are we going to switch to 4-3? Are we going to do something else? Oh, so he said it's going to be multiple. So I would feel like, and Ravens do a lot of multiple stuff anyway. It ain't like just because they're in a 3-4, they, they were, were a 3-4 defense, that that's all they did. So it's, it'll be a lot of the same stuff, but hopefully he adds some nice new wrinkles to some stuff too. Uh, he said he wants the defense to be flexible and adaptive. Woo, I love that. I love that. Now, just like with Harbaugh's, with his presser the other day, and with Mike McDonald's d- today, Said all the right things. Said all the right things. But, and, and it's going to take us a while to see how they deliver on this, especially more so Mike McDonald. Harbaugh, he got some stuff that he can deliver on still throughout the offseason, him and EDC. But actions speak louder than words. They speak louder than words. You're getting a fresh start, you got a clean slate. And Harbaugh got a clean slate too. We know Harbaugh's history with everything, but let's see how he approaches this offseason. Let's see how the Ravens approach this offseason. Because, again, now everybody got a clean slate. Even, even though we know their history, we know what they've done. But now let's see what they do and go from there. Um, but anyway, he said, uh, oh, okay, and he, he talked about how the – they asked John how the conversation was with him and Jim uh, when he first took Mike from the Ravens. So when Mike went from Ravens to Michigan, um, John said that he referred Mike. Uh, and, and then on the flip side, he said when the opportunity created itself, and I, I loved how he worded that. John Harbaugh, who he got away with words, don't he? That's why they all say, hey, he's John the motivator. He got away with words because he ain't, he ain't make a diss at wink. He said <laughs> when this opportunity created itself, he felt like Mike was a good candidate. I was like, okay, Hobbs, I see you, big dog. Um, now, uh, somebody did ask him if there's a hardball that he prefers between John and Jim. Uh, but it was obviously a joke. Or was it? But no, nah, it was a joke. I'm just playing. Um, but then he was asked about him starting as an intern. Um, and then he talked about how John and Jim Harbaugh, they are both two guys that shoot it straight. Uh, there's no ulterior motives. And he said that uh, it was actually Jerry Rossberg that called him uh, one day when he was about to take another job. So this back in 2014. He said Jerry Rossberg was the one that hit him up. I was like, oh, okay, you know that. And that brought up nice memories of Jerry Rossberg, who I thought was going to end up being a head coach somewhere because uh, I thought he was going to take the hardball route because hardball was special teams coordinator, Jerry Rossberg, special teams coordinator. I thought he was going to get the opportunity, but he ended up uh, retiring. And he like a real retirement. He was like, nah, I'm, I'm done. I want to spend time with my family. I want to relax. I'm tired of me having a top special teams unit. And the offense and defense don't get it done. Nah, he ain't say all that, but maybe he did. Uh, but nah, anyway. Um, the the next question they asked was, how do you, how do you put your own philosophy, uh, or how did you put your own philosophy in Michigan in just one year as a defensive coordinator? And and that's a uh, a, a very good question because he definitely made a difference. Um, in the one year that he was Ravens, I'm um, not Ravens. It, he was Michigan's defensive coordinator. Now, something that somebody pointed out to me that was very interesting too, because I know everybody keeps saying, "Oh man, he took Michigan, who was one of the bottom defenses, and he raised them to like 13th in the country, something like that." It, it, it was it was a very big increase. 
Now, last, the year before last, they were really bad. Bef the year before he came aboard, they were really bad. But in years prior to that, they had actually been good. They had actually been straight when it came to their rankings. So that was just something to think about. But he still did have a good impact on them, obviously. Um, but he said you have to have a vision. And you find out how to get everybody on the same page. And that starts with talking with everybody. You got to talk with the coaches, the players, everybody. And a, and a word that I love that he used was alignment. You got to have alignment. Everybody got to be in this thing together. Same track, same page. It's like when your car, if you're driving your car, your steering wheel is straight, but you notice the car is it's turning when you got the steering wheel straight. You're like, hold up, I ain't turning. What's going on? Your car is out of whack. Your car, everything is not on the same page. So you have to take it to get alignment and get everything in its proper place. That's what he's talking about doing with the defense and with the coaches and with the players, with everybody. And that's very important. Um, they asked him, what was the key uh, to turn that Michigan defense around? And he said it started with Jim Harbaugh. Uh, and he said how Jim Harbaugh created the environment. He said offense and special teams did their part. Uh, but he also said that it, it was simple, but it wasn't easy. So when he was giving the uh, kudos to the offense and special teams, like, hey, they did their thing. But so we just had to do all this, too. He said it's simple to say it, but it wasn't easy to do. Um, now, they, they asked Hobbs what he saw in McDonald when McDonald was in Michigan. Uh, and Hobbs said that uh, he already knew how his mind worked since he had been with the Ravens already. So Hobbs was obviously familiar with him. But he said that Michigan, uh, Mike had to teach guys a whole new system in two weeks. And he saw the success of the defense all year. Hobbs said he, he saw the way that guys were flying around and how they helped each other out. He was like, hey, I got to have it. You coming back. Uh, but he said they he said they even had conversations throughout the year. Um, but yeah, so I, OK, I said, we see, man. Then uh, Jameson, he asked if uh, age played a factor in the hire. And Harp said, no, age is just a number, but it's about it's about what you bring to the team. So, OK, cool. Yeah. Even though he is very young, he's again, 34. Defense. <laughs> like that's exciting, man, when you think about it, because that right there. You know how we've been talking about philosophy change all offseason? That could be a big change in the Ravens' philosophy on defense. That could be a huge change with it because you have this young coach. You have this coach who only has one year experience as a defensive coordinator, and it's on a collegiate level. So now you're doing it in the pros, even though you got a lot of experience under guys that have done it, but now you get to do it yourself. So you could bring some fresh ideas that nobody was thinking of and – yeah, it's, it's exciting to think about. Uh, but yeah, they, he, he talked about how they're evaluating the roster, said there'll be a lot of new faces, but it's all part of the process, as you all already know. Um, as far as philosophically, they asked him, what will be different from Wings defense? Now, that's a question that I know a lot of people had on their minds. Uh, and he said a lot of it will be the same. But he said there will be, uh, there will be some over-communication with the players. And he said, situationally, playing through stuff before it happens. Now, I know initially when I heard him say over communication, I was thinking, oh, no, 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 please don't make this to where it's overcomplicated and guys aren't understanding their assignments. They're not understanding their roles. Please don't. But he cleared that up and he said that when what he meant by over communication was the fact that they're going to go over stuff over and over and over and over and over again so guys can really have that full comprehension of it so guys can have that full understanding of exactly what they need to do where they need to be at and what their assignments are so that i'm with it and again like i said actions speak louder than words this is a good start as far as words but it's got to be followed up with action no pressure though um they asked harbaugh about uh flores's lawsuit um, the whole thing with that going on. And Hobbs said he didn't have anything prepared to say in regards to that. But he said nobody's more thorough when it, than in like the job search and everything than Bashadi. He said they, they're very thorough and they're very diverse in their hiring process. Um, Hobbs also said they have some great coaches that are excited to work together. And it's about having the right pieces. Now, somebody asked, uh, they asked both Mike and John if they expect to coach against Jim Harbaugh in the NFL again. And, of course, there's been the rumor that's been going around. Maybe by the time this video is finished uploading, because my internet be acting slow sometimes, like literally slow, because uh, it'd be taking forever. But maybe by the time uh, you see this video, Jim Harbaugh will be announced as the Vikings head coach. So we'll see what happens with that. 
Um, but they see this was one of my favorite questions right here. I, I loved it. They said they asked Mike. They said if uh, if the head coaching job at Michigan opened up, would you take it? And he said, well, respectfully, no. And I was thinking, mm, yeah, okay, all right, you, all right, hey. Unless the pay is the same as a defensive coordinator in the, in the NFL. I'm sure he got a raise going from defensive coordinator in college to defensive coordinator in the NFL. But them, them head coaches be making some money now. And, and, and whether it be, uh, I was about to say high school, but I meant to say whether it be the pros, whether it be collegiate, they be making some bread. Um, so either way, he, he going to get his money, man. But I, I just feel like that, that respectively no was a, not right now. Let's see how things go here. Because, again, this is an opportunity for him to possibly become a head coach in the NFL. So we'll see how that turns out. Um, he was also, we talked about that when he, they, they asked him how he got into coaching. Um, now, he asked if the goal was to get Patrick Queen a green dot again with how it used to be before with Ravens, how they had it on the linebacker. And he said, um, he said PQ is going to be good wherever he goes. And he said he has a lot of potential. Now, when he said that initially, it just, it just sounded very like, oh, hold up now. But... Let's see how things play out. Uh, he said his goal is also to get to be in the number one defense. I uh, said when it comes to players, you have to be up front with them. This was my, one of my favorite parts because this was about humility. Uh, he said with the players, you have to be up front with them. Be willing to admit when you don't know. I love that. And I always appreciate that. I, I always appreciated that about whether people, whether it be friends family, uh, co-workers, managers, supervisors. I always ap appreciate more so when people, just people in general, but when people in leadership roles, when they are willing to admit, oh, I was wrong. Oh, sorry, I didn't know. Ah, sorry, my fault, I messed up. I, I, I love when people are willing to do that because a lot of people aren't. A lot of people, they feel like since they're in a leadership role, oh no, I, I can't admit that I was wrong. They're going to look at me like I'm weak. Oh, or some people are like, oh, no, I'm, I'm, I wasn't wrong. You were wrong. Even if they know that they were dead wrong. But so I, I love that. Uh, but he said that players are smart. They know when you don't know and they know when you do know. So I was like, <laughs> That's true. And a lot of these guys are older than him. So anyway, um, they also asked him how, how it was to call plays for the first time. Since, again, he had been an assistant coach. He had never been a coordinator. <clears throat> Excuse me. He said it was about identifying situations. And he said he tried his best. And uh oh, that's a, little, a little piece of wink here. He said that uh, he said he tried his best to let his edge guys do the best that they could since he had two of the best ones in the country. And he said it's about putting players in the best positions. I said, oh, OK, now. All right. Now, hey, again, he said every he said all the right words. But it's about that action, man. Um, and then he said the aggressiveness is going to definitely carry over. And he said it's about keeping offenses off balance and about creating doubt at all times for opposing offenses. And that's true. So Mike McDonald, again, this this press conference, it, it went just exactly how you would think it would go. Um, we didn't expect anything crazy. We didn't expect anything shocking to be revealed or anything like that. Um, but it's, it's because with him being a coordinator. Like with John Harbaugh, we expected him to clarify some stuff, to say some stuff, and he did. Um, but with Mike McDonald being the new defensive coordinator, there's not really anything, any crazy stuff that he could possibly say uh, in his opening interview. I mean, in his opening presser, excuse me. So next up, we got Eric DaCosta. That is on Friday at 1 p.m. as well, just like these other two, because they had to spread them out. They had to spread them out. Cause again, and Harbaugh, this is probably why Harbaugh wanted to spread them out. Because Monday, for his presser, he wasn't looking so happy. He wasn't looking like mad or anything, but he wasn't looking so happy. So he took a break, took Tuesday off. But then today, oh boy, you couldn't tell Harbaugh nothing. You could not ruin his day. You couldn't kill his vibe. That Harbaugh was so happy. Hashtag happy Harbaugh. That's what he was today in this presser. So anyway, shout out to Mike McDonald. Like I said, clean slate. Clean slate. We'll see how he does. We'll see how he does the job. We'll see how he puts guys in position to have them succeed. Um, and just we'll see how he runs his show. Because now it is. The defense is his show. So team, keep it clean. I love y'all so much. I appreciate y'all. And we out.